Hello and welcome to another episode of Greenfleet Talks. My name is Kate Armitage and I'm your host for our discussion today. I'm delighted to be joined by Michael Burford, Engineering Manager at Fuel Cell Systems. Hi Michael. Hi Kate. Uh, today, Michael and I are discussing hydrogen vehicles and crucially refueling solutions. Um, Michael, by way of introduction, can you please tell me a bit about fuel cell systems and what you do? Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. so I joined fuel cell systems about uh, six months ago, and uh, we have been one of the key companies to uh, place fuel cells onto the UK market over the the last 10 to 15 years so that started mostly with methanol fuel cells and as the hydrogen fuel cell sector began to develop uh, we began to supply more and more hydrogen fuel cells as well but we kept coming across the issue of where to get the hydrogen from so our founder decided to take that as a challenge and develop our own solutions for hydrogen production, hydrogen refueling, and to uh, actually enable companies out there to use hydrogen fuel cells by providing them with a, a refueling solution. Great, great, thank you. And um, how important uh, for our audience uh, today, how important would you say hydrogen is in helping fleets reduce their vehicle emissions and ultimately become net zero? Yeah, so it's a really interesting time at the moment. We're in a position where our entire energy and transportation sectors need to break their dependence on fossil fuels to achieve net zero. And we're beginning to see the fragmentation of these in industries into a, a multitude of technologies mm. and they can all play a part. So hydrogen is a key technology here for a number of reasons and it has a number of uh, advantages over battery electric vehicles which still play a, an enormously important part in reducing emissions and while both deliver zero tailpipe emissions it takes an enormous amount of electricity to charge a battery electric vehicle and it takes a, a significantly long time and the range on battery electric vehicles is very much limited, particularly when it comes to the larger vehicles, larger uh, commercial and um, transportation vehicles. So electric drivetrains that are powered by hydrogen fuel cells have an increased range. They um, take a shorter time to, to refuel compared to their battery equivalents and um, it, it, it's a much more suitable fuel or, or propulsion source uh, for heavier vehicles and for fleet operations. Um, it can also work hand in hand with renewable electricity generation, which is another really key area for uh, achieving net zero uh, by using surplus electricity during periods of low demand. Uh, to produce and store energy in the form of hydrogen gas, which can be used to refuel fleet vehicles quickly when required. So given sufficient hydrogen refueling infrastructure, fleet, op fleet operators are able to fill up vehicles either in depot or from filling stations en route as they would currently or both. So hydrogen is a particularly attractive solution for vehicles that require a longer independent range and for these reasons it means that hydrogen can offer a close user experience in comparison to, to diesel vehicles uh, and uh, the, the solutions that people have been used to for so long. Great okay I, I get it so I mean what we're saying is that this this hydrogen technology is in no way competing with battery electric vehicles. They're effectively cousins um, uh, in, in, and very similar in many ways in that they both uh, use, uh, uh, can, can utilize renewable electricity. Uh, but, but crucially, these hydrogen uh, fuel cell vehicles are tackling a segment of the market that battery electric vehicles uh, are not so efficient at. So the, the bigger vehicles and the ones that require the longer range, as you said, much more akin to um, what we expect from diesel vehicles today. Exactly, yes, exactly. Um, 
could you could you give me a, a flavor of some of the hydrogen vehicle solutions that are uh, on the road today and how can um, fuel cell systems support fleets with the hydrogen refueling sure so when it comes to hydrogen fuel cells we uh, are seeing an increasing number of buses now buses are are a great example of where hydrogen can be successfully deployed because typically there will be a fleet of buses that go out during the day and um, perform their function, come back to a central depot where they're stored overnight, um, worked on, cleaned, et cetera, and refueled ready for, um, ready for deployment the following day. So um, in, in the same sense that they're currently refueled with diesel, having a, a hydrogen refueling uh, solution in a depot makes it a very practical solution for, for buses. So we're seeing an increased number of, of hydrogen buses enter the market, um, but also things like delivery vehicles, road sweepers, those kind of heavier duty vehicles um, that are making use of hydrogen fuel cells. There's also a solution whereby hydrogen is used as, a, as an additional fuel in, in a diesel combustion engine which we've seen a number of, uh, of vehicles such as road sweepers um, and vans go for that solution, which helps to um, move away from fossil fuels and cleans up, uh, clean, cleans up diesel emissions, but um, gives us a stepping stone onto uh, what we'd like to see, which is zero emission vehicles in the form of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. That's that's interesting. So it's a, a hybrid, a hybrid technology where people uh, still have the the reassurance of the the diesel that they that they know and understand, but and also op an opportunity to operate hydrogen vehicles. Yes, and at the same time, um, the the hydrogen acts as a almost an after treatment solution to a diesel combustion vehicle. So it reduces the emissions reduces the um, pollutants that are emitted by by the vehicle so it's really a win a win-win at this okay. stage that's really really interesting michael um there seems uh, to be quite a strong focus at the moment on battery electric uh recharging infrastructure um but does the does the government for uh, does the government funding for hydrogen refueling infrastructure go far enough and what more would you like to see yeah so i think we can all see that it's um been a, been an easy quick win for uh the deployment of electric vehicles particularly passenger uh, light duty electric vehicles i myself have an electric car and i can plug it into my uh, socket at home so there's there's electricity already there and most businesses can um, have have a have an option to upgrade and provide refueling for a small number of vehicles um, now we're talking about larger vehicles and lots of them in a fleet that becomes unsustainable so the funding that's been available to date for for hydrogen vehicles hydrogen um, refueling solutions it's all been very fragmented so there are funding streams available for for hydrogen vehicle powertrains for example 54 million was announced not not so long ago uh, for companies to develop those um more recently there was a large funding call for low carbon hydrogen supply because a lot of the hydrogen that's been on the market to date has come from industrial processes it's considered not green in the same sense so they're trying to encourage greener supply of hydrogen but again it seems to exclude refueling infrastructure which is the key element to bring these two together and actually make it work so what we need is is a more coordinated approach when it comes to to funding so that everyone along the, the hydrogen supply chain can benefit from uh from the support it needs to get us out of this um kind of rut of uh, we need the vehicles to justify the refueling solution. We need the refueling solutions to justify the vehicles and just help lift us out of that so we can all, all develop and move forward. 
it's definitely a, a definitely a chicken and egg situation and i'm i'm very pleased that you mentioned uh the need for green hydrogen because um uh, of course that that's uh, you know makes a substantial contribution to that decarbonization um I'm going to I'm going to uh, I know uh, your solution is very much geared on um, uh, depot recharging uh, and private more affordable hydrogen refueling uh, but it co comes up in conversation time and time again um, what about uh, the the public um, hydrogen refueling um, situation at, at the moment um, can we expect to see more I certainly hope so. So as, as it stands, I believe there are 11 refuelling stations in the, the entire of the UK. And of those, many are, are kind of clustered in, in certain areas. So, so long distance driving on hydrogen becomes a, a significant challenge at this particular point in time. When you look at Germany, for example, they, uh, they aim to have 100 refuelling stations across Germany by the end of 2021 and in, a, in quite a carefully planned um, route, if you like, to enable uh, fleet operators to, to be able to refuel along key routes in the country. I'd like to see uh, a similar approach uh, within the UK uh, to that approach that the Germans have, have taken. I, 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 I totally agree. And I think, um, you know, one of the uh, more, more obvious points is because these hydrogen vehicles do have a longer range and because the refueling is so much quicker, you actually don't need as many hydrogen public refueling stations across the whole of the UK as you would with, for example, battery electric infrastructure. So, um, yeah, I guess it's a it's a watch this space, but it's certainly part of breaking that chicken and egg cycle of, of what comes first, the vehicles or the or the infrastructure. Um, what just one last question, uh, Michael? What would you say to fleets that are interested in trialing hydrogen? I would say, don't be put off by the lack of public refueling infrastructure. What we're now seeing, uh, particularly over the last year, is a huge increase in inquiries from UK based companies that operate their own fleets to um, provide them with a solution so that they can begin to bring hydrogen vehicles on board. So our objective at fuel cell systems is to deploy equipment that meets the hydrogen need of the customer and enable them to trial hydrogen on a small scale first at a suitable location or their own depot. So we deliver hydrogen in the correct quantity, purity, pressure and location to fulfill our customers' requirements. Our newest product, which we call the High Cube, is modular. It's redeployable, so it can, it can be lifted, put on the back of a transporter and taken to whichever site our customers need. And that allows them to, smart, to start small, but with the opportunity to scale up that solution over time to meet an increasing demand in an affordable way. That, that, that's great, Michael. And, and the, the key here is you don't have to think about multi-million pound infrastructure. You can, you can start small, uh, get, get a taste for how it works and build up your capacity gradually. Perfect, thank you. Absolutely, So, and we even have mobile uh, refueling solutions so we can, um, Basically, we've converted uh, trucks to house a number of hydrogen cylinders, and that enables us to bring the hydrogen to the customer for projects. And we've done that a number of times. We recently supported a, um, uh, an automotive OEM in the development of their um, hydrogen fuel cell vehicle up in Northern Sweden for cold climate. Things. So wherever you are in Europe, uh, across the world, we can um, we can provide a solution for your hydrogen refueling needs. Is it a great opportunity to try before you buy? Absolutely, that's right. Right. Um, that is about all we've got time for, Michael. It has been a pleasure talking to you. 
a hydrogen fuel cell and battery electric technologies are complementary in many ways um, with hydrogen providing that high energy density and very quick refueling times to support larger vehicles and longer journeys companies like fuel cell systems are developing affordable refueling solutions that will support hydrogen fleets uh, thank you, Michael, and Fuel Cell Systems for joining Green Fleet Talks. Uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, please tune in to Green Fleet 365 again soon.